With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm Fahima Mohammed, your relationship coach. I want to welcome all of you, whether you're watching on Sky Channel 752, on Facebook or Twitter. A very, very warm welcome from all of us here on British Muslim TV. We have another topic and guest for you tonight, and it's no different where you can participate. It would be lovely to hear you call in live into the studio, and you can dial in on 01924231083. Please do ask the bill payers permission as standard network rates do apply. However, you can send in a message anonymously if you wish to do so via our free WhatsApp service, and that number is uh, 07585833. 5150. I look forward to hearing some of your messages and inshallah we're going to go straight into it to introduce my lovely guest who's streaming all the way from Spain who is Abdiya Iman Medis. Salamu alaikum Abdiya. Hey wa alaikum assalam thank you so much for having me on it's really great to be here I'm excited for the conversation. I'm really excited to have you and also giving us your time from your really, really busy schedule and streaming all the way from Spain. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, before we go into the topic, which is can one be independent and married? I think, you know, this is something that we have been seeing a lot recently, especially myself on TikTok, a lot of videos of single young Muslim women, especially who are on there preferring to stay single and independent. We're going to go into it, but before we do, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, Abdiya. Okay, so Bismillah. My name is Abdiya Iman Meddings, and I'm from Norwich in the UK. Um, but I've been living in Spain now for nine years. And over those nine years, as you can imagine, I've done so many different things. One of the first things I did was learn the language, <laughs> um, which took a whole little time in itself. Um, but I've been dipping out of different projects, but most of them, um, the common denominator has been community. And coming from a really loving, caring, alhamdulillah, community in Norwich, um, I entered a really lovely community here in Spain. And it also made me realize when I sort of came onto the online space back in sort of 2018 and started creating content, as many, many of us do nowadays, um, I realized that not everyone has that sense of community. So more recently, sort of over the last year or so, I've been organizing retreats for Muslim women in Spain and in the UK, and we're going to be launching into different locations very, very soon, inshallah, to bring people, you know, Muslim women together to have that sense of sisterhood, community, and also just to get away, get away on a holiday that is relaxing, peaceful, um, interesting in terms of like the history and the different tours and things. But really, really important is to connect and have that sense of sisterhood. So that's what I'm working on at the moment and um yeah i love it i love my job <laughs> i absolutely love what you just said it sounds absolutely fascinating exciting and what a wonderful job to sort of feel like you're on holiday yourself every time you do this but at the same time you get to help individual uh women to actually you know help them relax and retreat and take themselves away do you think that this kind of like fits in with the independence thing where people feel that you know um if they were maybe married, they may not have the independence. Now, before we even answer that question, maybe give me your kind of definition of what you think that people now refer to as being independent. And, you know, is, is it a problem or is it something that we actually need to address? Um, and where is it coming from where we actually define independence and now we're actually trying to promote being independent as young women, especially? Yeah, absolutely. I think, of course, like this is just talking from my own experiences and opinions and sort of what I've seen over the nine years that I've been married, alhamdulillah, and previously, is this idea of independence as this sort of idolized, you know, state of being where we are all, you know, pushed to be independent, to work, to earn money. Um, and we haven't really stopped to think necessarily, or maybe even I haven't myself, to see, like, understand what is it does it, what does it mean to be independent 
And where did this whole idea even come from? Like, is it something that's sort of come up in the last sort of 50 years to help the world economy, to, you know, push women especially back into work after, you know, child, you know, having children or, you know, pushing women to get married later or whatever it may be um, for someone else's gain? Um, we are all we all should be independent from um, the kind of ideologies that they're trying to push at us the whole time. We should be independent beings, independent thinking beings. Um, and remember that being independent should be um, an understanding of the world and not in terms with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think this word independent just gets chucked around um, and it'd be interesting to sort of break it down this evening and maybe, you know, for the viewers to go back, go away and think about what it means to be independent. But of course, in today's society, independent, the independent woman is sort of idolized and we're all sort of taught from a young age that we need to be independent, we need to study, we need to, you know, earn a certain amount of money, we need to be able to support ourselves, you know, without a man, without our families. And how does that then affect our relationships? Um, so yeah, that will be interesting to discuss. I, um, I basically am quite intrigued by all the points that you've raised so far. And um, I really want to go into it, like you said, a lot deeper. I think we can look at it from various angles, actually. Um, I guess what you're saying is, you know, where does it come from? And, you know, obviously marriage is about that codependency to a certain extent, as well as that commitment and responsibility between two people. But don't you think that nowadays, regardless of even what society pushes forward to for an independent woman to remain um, sort of like, you know, for herself and be kind of like, you know, uh, financially independent or create sort of, you know, herself in a way where she's in the workforce. But um, the other side that I see a lot is the fact that a lot of women are now um, you know, basically voicing for independence is because they've come out of bad relationships and um, they feel that, you know, that independence gives them something to fall back on. And if anything, mm. it gives them something where they don't have to actually remain in those bad relationships or they can actually, you know, make choices where they're not forced uh, to stay in situations that are uncomfortable. I know this is quite extreme, but what's your thoughts on that? No, 100%. Like, I think from very very early on in in times many you know not it's not a recent thing that women have had their businesses um you know look at Khadija radiallahu anha like she was where you can say an independent woman um you know she are uh, she proposed to the prophet sallam in marriage so you know we have <coughs> incredible examples of independent women who were running their own businesses um we don't have to look into you know modern times to see that it's nothing new um, and absolutely, like women should have, you know, that's one of the reasons for the dowry, right? Like, please correct me if I'm wrong, that you you have something to fall back on if you're not working, if you're looking after your families. Um, you you should, and I always encourage my friends, you know, and I'm really, really grateful that I have it myself, that I'm able to work from home, I'm able to work on my own schedule. I think it's really freeing, actually. I feel really independent in terms of, like, being able to, you know, not depending um, on someone telling me when I have to work, how I have to work. Um, and it is important for women to be able to support themselves in many ways. But I think one, sometimes when we go down that hole um, or down that, that path, um, we can kind of forget that it's okay to ask for help. We are beings that codepend on one another, whether it's in a relationship or whether it's in a family or your neighbors or whatever, that we, we should feel comfortable to ask for help. And actually there's... Um, and just to like touch upon what you said about, you know, abusive relationships and um, things like that, I think a lot of the time that's obviously awful and like may Allah help all of those people that are in those situations. We should be teaching all of our children that you, you, sh you should be, you know, doing something or have some skills so that you can earn an income, whether that means that you should work your whole life or whether that means that when you have children, you should go back into, you know, the workforce very quickly because, um, because maybe someone's like, because your boss is encouraging you or maybe because you want to, you know, and that's fine. But I think we do need to definitely teach our children to have some skills, whether they use them or not throughout their lives, but that they can, you know, be independent and yeah, earn a living um, in case 
they really find themselves in situations where they they don't have anything else as well I hope like people aren't misunderstanding what I'm saying is that you know it's great that you're in a as long as you're in a healthy marriage and you know you're both pursuing your dreams in your career um, and you can support one another you know because some some months one you know for example my husband's business not going so well one month well my business might be going better that month and I can support him and vice versa I don't think it's um, like one or the other. I, yeah, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. And I think it's really good that we're divulging into this a lot more deeper um, because there are definitely different scenarios to look at this. And I want people to understand that, you know, again, these are just opinions from what we see and what we hear. But at the same time, you know, um, everyone will have their own story and it is case by case. And we are generalizing here as well. We're trying to pick out some of the scenarios that we see, which is quite common. And my main concern was there's a lot of young people that are just hearing bad stories. And then they feel that they have a fear of their independence been taken away because especially coming from the Muslim community they not maybe as um, sort of like on par with the West with regards to having that equality even I don't know even that word sometimes can be you know sort of like you know transgressed is to say you know there's no such thing as that we have ex- separate roles in the house so when a woman has independence does she you know what what is her role and how has that changed over time because women's roles have changed where they are out of the house more whether there is probably um, you know the the father probably even taking on more responsibility and you know it's not just all left onto the mom for example to do the you know the house chores to even take care of the children and things like that so um we are coming into a short break and i've just given you some food for thought and um inshallah we're going to go back into it where abdi is going to give us some more insight into this i think it's just a really amazing start and we've gone straight into it and obviously i'd love to hear some of your comments and some of your queries because i know everyone has their own experience they're coming from their own story, their own sort of background. And it would be nice to hear your side. And you know, men and women, do you find women now that they want too much independence even? And what does that even mean for you? So I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear what's your thoughts. Do you think, you know, even for a woman to be independent, does that actually create some sort of like, you know, rift in a relationship over time? Or can you be independent, you know, beforehand and at the end of the day, or what, when you're married, does that hold you back? And that's what the fear is for a lot of young girls. So inshallah, please do stay with me. I really do appreciate you tuning in. But I do hope that you join me at the other end of this uh, break and we will be discussing so much more with my lovely guest and we will see you in a few moments. Please do not go away. We'll see you shortly. Salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. Again, we're having an amazing discussion discussing how can one be independent and married? Now, we do have a caller online. I'd like to go straight to that before we actually go further into this discussion. So... Do we have our caller ready? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hi, assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for calling in. You're live. What would you like to say? I know this. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, and this is uh, one, it's not so simple, but it's crucially important to discuss these type of topics. Because this, um, if not addressed, then can lead to complications in the relationship and uh, views on the both sides are important. So my personal experience, I just like to add as a suggestion. So you see that uh, men and women uh, both have the qualities to adopt. They adopt the culture, they, they understand each other in a relationship. Now, the thing is that my, my personal suggestion is that before um, entering to a relationship, we need to, to have a bit of a um, counseling uh, because I came from um, Asian countries, and when I came to this country, many things I wasn't aware. So I was, I felt that it would have supported me a lot if there was a 
of pre-marriage uh, counselings uh, that can explain somebody from uh, before marriage this this could have the uh, the, the lifestyle uh, the working lifestyle and whatever is there after the when you you live together your wife is working and then it will helps a lot uh, to understand what you are accepting in a relationship and how you can support your wife and uh, in into a relationship um uh, i think uh, uh, this need to establish i don't know whether uh, this is possible or not the counseling is important where we need to have information that what are the reason where these complications started why the breakers happens what are the common causes so have the clear discussion if the your partner is working what type of work they do and what are the uh, how they going to to accommodate for me i'm giving my own personal views uh, if i have to stay at home and i have to look after uh um the, the the for example if i came from abroad i may not be able to get straight away a work i need some experience i need some time life abroad is different when you come here and you as a into a relationship and the life is so fast so there is a time that you need to, to adopt the cultures and other thing and this is a sensitive time this is a time when complication begins um mm-hmm. i think uh, this area if we cover with the counseling um, uh, to pre-inform these changes can help massively the second point is um, into a, a when uh, to the vice versa the other side is that uh, uh, the, the your spouse or your wife uh, i my wife uh, alhamdulillah she works and we have uh, two children as well um, and she look after a uh, home and i we both no we anything that we do we have a respect uh, of the opinion anything that we do we do mutually uh, in the best of interest we uh, listen and we respect and it's very honest my wife uh, always give me the best advice uh, and uh, i always benefited um, i think uh, uh, if somebody is listening um, uh, that uh, sometimes we say the man has to make the decision of course men can make the decision but i think we should give a presidency to our wife in a way sometimes this is more beneficial and that's come i just wonder can you hear me okay i can hear you absolutely fine and i'm loving everything that you're saying thank you so much for calling in i absolutely agree with everything that you've said and i really appreciate you taking the time out to call in and i think what you highlighted is so important so vital i myself do give premarital courses and it is really beneficial to a lot of couples and the other issue you raised about the cultural differences because obviously going yeah. into a marriage you know from a different country it does make a huge difference thank you so much for that i really appreciate it i will come back to you on it but we do have another caller online assalamu alaikum you're live on british muslim tv what would you like to say yeah uh, um thank you for giving me the chance to talk um, oh you you're still on thank you no you're absolutely welcome we will definitely be addressing that in a minute but we do have another caller assalamu alaikum uh wa alaikum assalam how are you you're live on british muslim tv what would you like to say uh yes um thank you for giving me the opportunity to call so um so the topic of independence is an interesting one um because uh, the way i look at it is that uh, independence has never been taken away from a man or a woman uh, full stop culturally if religiously it's always been i think the sister abida touched on it that uh our, you know uh, our, uh this ladies of the past have been independent so most of the hadiths have been related by ladies as well so independence has been there and and i think the notion of independence we have to look at it from uh, different angles if we look at it from a cultural mm-hmm. point of view yes it was always taken away but religiously it's not there so i think the topic should be it, 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 it you have to be very careful how to discussing this because i think Islam promotes independence that's why when Islam talks about man and woman in the Quran it addresses man and woman in, in on many on many individual cases um but because we have not understood the Islamic concept of independence we screwed up basically uh, in in time um it, it, what i mean by that is that we've we've gone past regress and now independence has become a kind of um 
uh, it's kind of a stamp of authority that I'm going to be independent. But you don't need to be because Islam promotes it so openly. It's crazy. It's like on another level compared. I mean, women yeah. went through suffragettes to, in, in this Western community to get independence. Yes. Islam didn't do that. 1400 years ago, you had the independence there. Uh, sorry, I don't mean you, but I just mean it in general of uh, we had mm. the independence. So I think the, the problem isn't um, the word independence. The problem is understanding of it. Um, Islam doesn't stop women from working. It, you know, I, I was, it doesn't stop a woman from doing anything. History has proven the point. I think yeah. it's a cultural problem. And I think when going into marriage, I think what couples need to understand is that the going, we are doing nikah. So if we understand the, the concept of nikah and marriage Islamically, not culturally, then you're not restricted by independence. You're restricted by lack of knowledge. And once the Definitely. knowledge increases, the independence is blatantly there. So what I want to say to this is, um, generally, when, I, when people talk about independence and in our religion, it, it doesn't look religiously, it's more culturally. And, and, and in this society now, women are fighting for it when they, didn't, they don't have to. It's just how it's portrayed. It's portrayed, I believe, incorrectly, because a woman that has proper independence yeah. does all the roles of the house anyway. And a man that has proper independence of Islam does all the roles anyway. So then, and that's what proper independence is, because we're never going to be independent because we're always going to rely on Allah. So independence is really never going to go away. It's just the definition of understanding of it. Um, so that was really my, my my point was to to emphasize that I think if you look at it from a different angle, it's actually more positive notion to it than a negative notion, and that's the way it's seen in society now. Thank you so yeah. much. That was absolutely refreshing and enlightening. And I honestly thank you so much for your comment and statement. And that is so true. And we were going to cut to that towards the end, especially towards the faith and understanding the cultural differences. But you said it absolutely beautifully. Thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate both our callers tonight. Adia, what's your response to these callers? And for fantastic, actually, fantastic statements. Yeah, absolutely. Well, firstly, um, just the the last um, brother, he was speaking about, you know, this understanding of independence. And I think it's it's just that it's like this, this new understanding of independence that we have to, you know, it's almost like we have to, we want, we have to want to do it all, you know, and I think yeah. it's more important to be independent of our mindset, you know, like independent, be able to think and be able to choose what we want to do, choose what we want to study, choose what we want to, you know, what we want to do in terms of career. And I think a lot of the time it's and it's not just like, you know, cultural in terms of like Asian culture, Arab culture, like it's within I'm British, like my parents are English, you know, um, and we also have the that sort of connotate like negative thing of it being like, you know, you not negative, but just like you have to want it all. You have to do it all. And what I'm trying to say is that, yes, study what you want, work as what you want. But when you come to your marriage, like accept help from one another like accept being a partnership um and you know don't for example I'll just give you a little story and because I also fall into this I was on my first retreat back in June and I you know do all the logistics getting everything organized all by myself you know completely organized this retreat just with me and one other sister and we were like so proud of it I finished okay I went to get my car to drive back to Seville by myself um, and I was already feeling a bit nervous like coming out the first day all these things could go wrong and I was thinking wow I'm just by myself like if anything goes wrong it's on my shoulders and you kind of feel the pressure you know and um, anyway I get in my car to come home everything's gone really smoothly everything's gone really well I'm feeling like really like an independent woman like really really happy and my I left the lights on on my car and my battery was drained and I was like really Abdiya like you can't even do that and I started like beating myself up like how could you have let this you know happen you're meant to be like independent you don't need anyone this and that and I suddenly was like you know who did I call I called my husband I was like what shall I do what shall I do and you know he calmed me down and he told me what I should do anyway I knocked on this um this guy's door who was just in front of the where I was parked my car and it's a friend of ours and I said oh Salim like you know I was feeling so independent I'd done this whole week by myself and now you know I'm knocking on your door asking for your help he said why do you want to like feel so independent like this kind of notion that you can't ask for help um so I think there's there's a kind of like 
there's a subtlety there, you know. Yes, we should be independent. And Islam teaches us to be independent, to be able to, you know, look after ourselves, you know, earn an income, study, be open-minded, you know, subhanAllah, look at all the incredible examples that we've got. But it doesn't mean that we have to do everything alone. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's what I want to say. I love so many different takes that has actually come across tonight, especially from our callers. I think that, you know, the premarital counseling is so essential and obviously having the respect. You mentioned partnership, our last caller as well, you know, highlighting how important it is to actually understand our dean more than anything else, because everything really comes down to that. And I think that is the crux of everything. And he really summed it up in a beautiful way to actually understand that, you know, um, if we do understand our faith and our religion, then we have separate roles. It's nothing like in the Western sort of, you know, terminology of us not having this. We've had that so many years before. And we just got to obviously learn about it and, you know, basically put that across to our partners so that we have that kind of like, you know, understanding between the two. And um, you know what? I'm just so blown away by everything that has been said so far. And again, I want to thank you so much for participating and calling in. I really, really appreciate it. And if any of you have any more of your stories, don't go away. Take care and we'll see you soon. Take care. Salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. You know, during the break, it got me thinking, we complain a lot as women as well about there's not enough decent men out there. And I'm sorry, but tonight we've had two amazing male callers that has actually shown that they do exist. And I do believe that there's so much more out there. So at the end of the day, um, they gave an amazing point of view. They highlighted some really essential points and we need to give more credit where it's due and not just fall into this trap of either, you know, the empowerment independence to the extreme where we don't need each other even in psychology it says that you know it's really healthy to be part of somebody it's human nature to be also wanting the companion and the actual connection it's not just you know our faith says it all but also science and psychology backs it up so as many times that you can actually say to yourself convince yourself that yes you're an independent woman and you can do things alone and you can absolutely do that but you know what it's actually good to also do that with a partnership it's do, you know it's good to do that with a team member and actually to you know have these kind of conversations beforehand Abdiya, we were talking in the break more about what our first caller discussed when it came to premarital um sort of counseling what's your thoughts on that i mean you know is it widely available do you think people feel ashamed to even go and think that you know we don't need to go see some sort of like counselor or therapy or coaching what's your you know sort of take on this yeah, so it's it's really interesting because, you know, I, I had um, my mum, she had a Malaysian um, living with her for a bit, like a, like a lodger. And he actually went back to Malaysia and went through the whole marriage counselling at the mosque um, before he, he got married. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. So in my communities, like it's completely unheard of. It's enough that you just like each other. You're both Muslim. Great. Get married. Bismillah. Good luck. And I just think like there's so much work to be done because... There is so much, so much divorce. You know, there is so many relationships that break down. And um, I didn't do any marriage counselling. I literally was just like, you know, this is a great guy, mashallah, a good Muslim. Um, we liked each other. Um, I knew that I was strong enough in myself to just be my authentic self. And just, and I think that's really, really important. And I think a lot of the time, before you get married, you're trying to be like a different person. <laughs> it's like you're trying to show the other person someone that you're not, you know, some just like the best version of yourself that maybe you're like that 10 minutes every day, you know. And I think it's really important just to be authentic, you know, speak to them about your your desires or your, your goals, um, but not in a way as like, you better let me do this. You better let me do that. It's like, look, this is me. You know, this is what I want to do. These are my aspirations. What are your aspirations? And get excited for each other's dreams and goals um, and just support one another. I think it's really, really important. Yes, let's get the counselling. Let's get the good advice. Um, 
but also let's go into the marriage being like we're going to give it our all we're going to really really try and um you know inshallah this works out you know and sometimes it doesn't and that's that's normal it's, you know that it's not just a you know problem within the muslim community like it's 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 human nature you know that things don't work out sometimes but i think if you have the right advice the right counsel um and of course you're both you know trying to stick to your deen as much as you can and treat each other with respect um then um yeah you will have at least a good a good start inshallah a good definitely uh, no definitely i agree with that 100 i mean there's a lot that goes on within the premarital courses and you can address things that you never thought about and you know not everything is clear cut but at the same time it kind of sends sets out a goal it sets out you know understanding each other and you know as you want to get to know each other you can ask those very difficult uncomfortable questions and if you're doing it with someone who is like a mediator it's a really healthy start definitely now let's be realistic um you do lose some sort of independence when you are married let's just have to be out there there is some sort of like you know compromise there is some sort of, you know people have to obviously you know maybe give up a few things whatever it may be um what is it on the top of your head because we've got to be realistic at the end of the day because you know get and getting into a marriage is definitely different to being single and independent you know is different when you are married and independent and single and independent you know um there's a consideration there for example of you know making decisions um there's like you know maybe even you know talking about it before you just go out and leave the house for example right whether it's you know the wife or the husband even nowadays so um what would be the things that you feel that you know we can actually say look it's not a fear but it's a different change of lifestyle where you are when you are married there is you know a difference and there will be a bit of loss of you know that sort of just the, you know that single person life um again what is your sort of take on that so there's um there's lots to break down there and actually one of the first things that i would say is um our parents and what kind of messages they've they've sort of been giving us what are the patterns that we have what are the marriages that we've seen um because they might also sort of give us this sort of like um you know before we even enter the marriage we're already fearing what what ind what independence is going to be taken away from us you know my mum never was able to go for work my mum always had to have the dinner on the table at seven o'clock my mum had to do this my mum had to do that or my dad had to do this my dad had to do that i remember when i got married my mum said to me you know she could have said oh you know make sure you cook nicely for your husband make sure you do this she said dear when you get married your life begins Mm. okay and maybe that's not what she lived but that's what she wanted me to live and I think like it's personally and I actually relate really a lot to the the first caller um I had to move country when I got married so that was a huge compromise I had to leave my family I had to you know not just the house but the city and the country so that was a huge compromise that potentially took away some of my independence at the beginning because I couldn't work because I didn't know the language so I couldn't earn, you know, much money. I couldn't earn any money. Um, and so I remember calling my mum and saying, mum, like, I just feel like, because, you know, I'm, I'm a goal setter. Like, I need to be going towards something. I need to be busy. I need to be working. I need to be in, interacting with people. I need to be chatting. I'm a very, very love to meet new people. I love to chat. Um, and I remember calling her and she said, um, Abdiya, you're building the foundations of your marriage. Like, that is a huge job to be doing. And, you know, take the time. Like, it's, it was okay that in that moment, like, I couldn't work, I couldn't earn any money. But I was focusing my attention and my, you know, full, like, mind on something that was going to be giving me the benefits for years to come, inshallah. And I'm so glad that I took that advice and I understood it because that's really, really helped me. And then times came where I was able to start building my own projects and my husband was really excited. I'm, I'm excited. I'm doing things. And, you know, he started his business. And actually when he started his business, um, he had no money. So we were like really poor because I wasn't really working. He started his business and it was just like, oh, what do we do? He moved in with his mum. He sold all his gold that he had, okay? And I went to study Arabic in France by myself, you know? And um, it was a wonderful experience. We, we took the situation and we made, you know, the best out of it. I went to do something that I really, really wanted to do and he supported me, didn't say, oh, why are you leaving me, this and that and that. He moved in with his mum for a year and a half. Um, actually, I think it was two and a half years, actually, yeah, because I was there for one year and then we were, you know, 
like I was sofa hopping for a year and a half and not at one point did I question oh this isn't working anymore oh he can't support me oh what's going on I was just working doing my thing staying with friends and we'd meet up and things like that and it was fine I think like one of the biggest things as well is that we need to get rid of this blueprint for marriage You know, we don't have to be like, this is how it happens. This is what you have to do. You both, you know, the wife continues to work for five years. Then she gets pregnant then she has the kids. And then, you know, a year later, like she goes back and like, why? We can just do what we want, you know, like as long as it's within the, um, in, within Islam, like within the deen, like it's allowed to do, like enjoy your marriage, like enjoy doing what you want to do, do what you love, support one another. And of course, more responsibilities come the further you go into marriage when children come along and you have to reassess and I think that's really important just to reassess things you know maybe you have to compromise on some hours that you're working on your business or you're doing work and things like that but then it can be a like a team you can speak about it as a team so I love that you know um I just want to say firstly thank you so much for sharing that story I think You've just given us so much food for thought, especially what you've just explained about the hard times and how to overcome it and how to still work at it. And I think you've highlighted something so important, which I didn't even think of before, was having that blueprint and the fact that, you know, you had to separate yourselves, even living together for a while. And it could, you looked at it as something exciting, right? But, you know, most people were looking at it as something that, you know, it's like a step back in our marriage. But you were building, like your mom, you know, lovely, that she actually even gave you that sort of advice but you're very lucky that you have that support and yeah alhamdulillah and to be honest you know you you sort of flourished even in the hard times and um this is what the show is about to actually give some real insight into people's lives as to how it really is and it isn't you know this hollywood bollywood sort of story it's not the fairy tales that you see even in disney you know sort of like movies this is reality and if you said like abdia mentioned being, you know, in the line of Islam, you know, you can have these, you know, obstacles, you can have these things that, you know, sort of make maybe push you apart for a little while, you know, physically, but at the same time, that marriage still continues. So even if you're young and you're at university and you feel that you can't stay together and you're still living with your parents, you know, these, these things don't stop you. The barakah and the blessing is still there. That's really, really essential that people need to understand that, that marriage is a blessing. That's why it is there, half your dean. And yes, even with all the problems, um, I think what you just highlighted was so beautiful. Honestly, thank you so much for sharing that. It's really actually touched me a little bit because it's just like, it's so raw and um, you don't hear people actually explain the kind of things, especially now with social media, it's all like these wonderful holidays and snapshots and beautiful pictures. And people compare that thinking that that's what I want. And mm-hmm. if I don't have that for my partner, that's the other side of things. You know, this so-called independent woman who is there by herself shopping and dining with her friends. But at the end of the day, she is at home alone, you know, wishing that there was some sort of companionship. And I think that's really important that you highlight that you can be in a couple and you can go through sort of hardship. Um, do you think that, you know, um, I know our first caller even said that it's not just, you know, cause I was going to ask this, it's more like women that give up the independence, but he even mentioned that he was the one that moved. So he was the one that actually had to be sort of like, you know, not independent and rely on, you know, his partner at the time. So it can work both ways and women out there, Absolutely. they need to understand that, you know, it does happen. Um, we are coming into our final break. We are going to be discussing a little bit more. And um, honestly, it's gone so quickly. I could sit with you for another whole, maybe six days retreat, actually, Abdiya, and speak about this. Okay. It's so interesting. <laughs> but no, we, um, again, I just want to highlight that, you know, the show is for you to all listen because we want to build our Muslim community and the Ummah. And that starts with your household. And because it's breaking so much, unfortunately, we have amazing guests like we have tonight. Um, to share their insights, share their stories so that you can have some sort of like, you know, um, interaction and sort of insight into, you know, how life really is. And, um, you know, with marriage, again, like I said, it's definitely a blessing. And if you take the right precautions, like with premarital counseling, and if you have these like difficult conversations, if you understand that you're doing it because of, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then even those hardships can be at ease. But stay with me as we are coming into a final break in a few moments. But inshallah, we will be discussing the rest of the conversation in a few moments. We'll see you on the other side. Take care.
With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. We are here on the final part of the episode. And again, it's been, you know, absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for everyone that's, you know, contributing with your own thoughts. And we actually do have a message that was sent across um, on our social media pa- platform saying, Salam to Fahima and Abdiya. Thank you for the show today. Very good points. Alhamdulillah. To be independent means also some space some freedom and trust with your partner in a relationship and marriage. Marriage, yes, is a blessing. But my question before the end is, what makes someone ready and mature for marriage, especially as a young person in their early 20s who wants marriage one day? Thank you so much for that question. Really beautiful. And I would like to ask you, Abdiya, what's your thoughts on that lovely question? Well, I got married a month after my 20th birthday and I always imagined that I would get married when I was 30 because I thought that was like a good age because like you would have done what you wanted to do. And then like, obviously, when you get married, everything stopped. Those are the patterns that I had. So I've gone, I've had to break down a lot of things. Um, I genuinely don't think anyone's ever really ready for marriage. Like if you haven't experienced it before, obviously if you're going into second or third marriage, like you might have some idea, but um, again, it's with a different person. So it's a completely different kettle of fish. But um, I think you, for me, my genuine feeling when I was getting married was Bismillah. Mm. Allah help me guide me keep us you know with that strong intention of we want to make this work for his pleasure and that's it like you can be 16 you could be 60 like you know I just think um I don't fully think we're ever really equipped even like if we you know and definitely do the counseling definitely get the advice but we're never really equipped and you'll never actually know the person until you live with them I almost felt like I was getting to know someone completely different you know so um alhamdulillah everything's worked out and everything's I love that advice actually um yeah having the tawakul the trust that you know that time that you know you have to if it comes for you then you know take those steps 100% I love it thank you so much but before we end, I just want to also add, you know, um, there are still women that really value um, sort of their independence and there's a reason for it. Um, but we can also enter into a relationship having that independence and, and doing it quite healthily. Um, could you give us a scenario of how that might look like so people do not get fearful and they do actually understand that, you know, this is what it really means and entails. And maybe that word independence isn't something that we need to use, but this is what we refer to nowadays. And that's what people are actually, you know, talking about. So again, what would be your yeah. guidelines to that? Yeah, I think absolutely. Like we value ex- we value independence and we value like emotional, economic, spiritual independence even because, and from my own experience, because I saw you know I came home from school one day and my father had left um and alhamdulillah he's still in my life now we have a great relationship now but it was so shocking that you know that now become became a pattern for me so even in my, within my own marriage you have you know those well, they call them stinky thoughts or you know negative thoughts like oh he's not going to come home one day or there's actually a saying in Spanish which is potentially not Islamic but it's like oh he went for tobacco and he never came home you know and like I know people that that's happened to you know um so I think that's real fears that you know women and men have that things are going to go wrong in their marriage and I think that's why it's important to feel confident in yourself and confident in Allah and his um and you know that he is is you know, everything's written for you, you know, he will look after you, but it's important, you know, to feel like you're financially independent, you're emotionally independent, and you're spiritually independent, okay, Um, because then if anything were to happen, or those thoughts came into your mind, you're like, well, at least I would be okay, you know, I will be able to stand firm by myself, and um, reach out to those I need help from, but that I'm not just going, like, the my legs aren't going to just fall from beneath me, um, and I'll be able to deal with the situation, like however traumatic it is, because I've got that sort of a bit of a, um, yeah, I'm financially, emotionally and spiritually independent. 
Absolutely. And actually, the, another point that you've just raised as well, which is really important, that being independent doesn't mean that, you know, you can't have support. And I think you said that before. And, you you know, it doesn't take away your independence when you have got a partner. It doesn't take away your independence when, you know, you actually have got, you know, a relationship. Um, you just have to discuss these points. Um, if someone is quite fearful and um, they're thinking right now, um, I'm still not quite sure, you know, I'd rather stay single. What would be your advice to them, Abdiya? I never, do you know what? People ask me to like, oh, can you, you know, do you have anyone that I want to marry or have any advice? Like, I think just to be honest, like if you're worried about that, your independence is going to be stripped from you, then you're not looking towards the right person. Mm-hmm. I think there's a person out there, obviously, for everybody, right? Allah is so, so generous. And if someone, you know, says to you, oh, you, but you know, you're not going to be able to work as long hours or, you know, you know, I, I expect this, I expect that. They're not for you. They're just not for you <laughs> because, you know, but then at the same time, I really appreciate the fact that I can work from home so that when I do become a mother, inshallah, I can continue to pursue my career while still being able to give the time that I would like towards my family. So I think that is independence, being able to choose spending time with my family or spending time on my work. And if I want to leave my work or my business, it doesn't make me any less independent. 100%. Because I chose to spend time with my family. And even if I chose not to work and depend financially on my husband, which I have at many times during my marriage, not because I've chosen, but because I haven't been able to, it doesn't mean that I'm not independent thinking. I'm not independent spiritually, emotionally, you know, it might just be like financially in that moment. I'm allowing, you know, I'm gifting my husband the opportunity to be able to like look after me. And it's his also, we have to understand like Islamically, like his responsibility to, you know, make sure that I'm, you know, maintained looked after doesn't go to say that we should be stingy you know be generous look after one another and yeah enjoy your life a hundred percent no i think it's really important what you've highlighted everyone that has actually you know called in and sent in messages and all the points that you have said um has been so crucial for this conversation um and i hope that people who are listening understand that you know at the end of the day when we're talking about this again it comes from the fact that you know a lot of women need to really go back and learn their faith and understand what it means even in their own um sort of like definition of independence and remember that when you are in a healthy, happy relationship, that's when you are actually, you know, mentally actually in a healthier well-being sort of situation. And a lot of science and a lot of studies have actually said that we are created to procreate as well as to, you know, mix and mingle with each other and have those special connections. And it's a wonderful feeling. So don't be afraid. Now, Abdiya, we are coming towards the end of the show. Could you sort of tell us how could people get hold of you to join in your lovely retreat and, you know, what kind of things that you actually get up to so that, you know, we can actually have some people contact you. So, um, yes, you can definitely find um, me on Instagram. It's abdia.iman. So my first and middle name. Um, And also you can follow to my retreats page from my bio. Um, We've got a website and everything. And um, we organize um, six day retreats at the moment in Spain. And we've got some dates for next year, which is really, really exciting. I'm actually like repping a bit of um, Granada here today. Um, we actually give a scarf to each of our participants so we can all be matching while we're on our Hambra tour. Um, and we just have six days. We spend some time in the mountains, some time in the city, um, you know, relaxing. Obviously, it's just women, private pool, halal food, delicious. Um, and just really have some time to get away feel that connection with other Muslim women from around the world. We have had women from all over and just, yeah, feel that sisterhood, be there for one another, hold the space for one another. We do some movement, we do some walks, we do some yoga, um, we do some journaling, um, we do some dhikr together, we pray together and we just have a really nice time. Wow, sounds absolutely so fascinating. Please do get in touch with Abdiya dot iman on her instagram page and you know have some of that independent time that sort of one-on-one time with another few ladies that you can actually enjoy but at the same time it's a healthy space where you can still come back and connect i just want to say thank you so much for your time you have given us so much food for thought it's been an absolute pleasure i really am so grateful for everything that you've shared especially your personal stories and all your you know amazing sort of thoughts around all the questions 
questions that has been put across to you. Um, any final thoughts before we end? No, I just think, um, you know, we should just continue to be working on ourselves, um, always sort of like independently thinking about how we can become better people, how we can become, you know, better, in, more emotionally independent. And, um, you know, I think we focus so much on this idea of <clears throat> we need to be financially independent, you know, be able to support ourselves, but we also just need to be independent thinkers and want to be the best for our spouses. Um, so we Thank can you. just have enjoy enjoy your life. That's that's the main thing. Amazing. Right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Abdiya. Thank you so much, everyone that has tuned in and streaming from wherever you are, whether it's on Sky or on Twitter, or on Facebook, all the messages, all the calls. I absolutely love the engagement. So fantastic to have all of you participate with us tonight. And also, I just want to also add that, you know, having independence as well is, is more about not just the, the finance, what we think about it. it's actually knowing yourself really well, and being independent in your mind, because I think, you know, the one thing we didn't touch on is actually having that too much independence of your partner, with regards to the need, the emotional need that you might feel that is not within yourself. And I think that's another issue that, you know, hopefully we'll get Abdiya back or we'll have another conversation with regards to this but again thank you all for watching thank thanks you know to everyone that has called in all the messages and have a really really lovely evening from all of us here on british muslim tv we will be continuing the show every week on thursday 9 30 same time same place with more topics new guests and definitely you're more than welcome to send in your recommendations for us to discuss some more hot topics Take care, have a good night. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>